Hey everyone, today I'm going to be making a video about modding KL chalk switches, specifically chalk V1s. I've got a V1 silver here, which is my preferred linear of choice. And as I just mentioned, this is a linear and these techniques are really about silencing or greatly quieting chalk switches. So we're not really going to be talking about how you might mod tactiles or clickies. These techniques really don't work there. So in terms of what we want to do, if we're trying to silence these guys, we're trying to make the action downwards quieter, the action upwards quieter, and we're trying to reduce friction generally within the switch. So to reduce the, uh, the sound generated from the cap smacking against the top of the housing, when we press it downwards, we use O-rings, right? Which is the thing that we usually use with MXL switches. This is already a popular technique. You can get these on Amazon. I've got a little baggie over here that I got on Amazon. I'll put a link in the description to them, but they're really easy to find and they're pretty easy to apply. So basically you would just take a cap here. You're going to take your tweezers or just your fingers will work of course as well and put it on the inside of the stems here. And then you can just put that on your switch. So that goes together pretty easily. And then you've already got this thing put together and it's a bit quieter than a normal switch. I'll go through some sound testing at the end of the video with my Microdox here. I've got a few different configurations to show you how this all works out. Um, but either way, uh, this doesn't give you that much of a sound reduction. And also you get about a millimeter less of travel because the traditional O-rings that MX style switches use are already like a millimeter thick. And that's a lot in the context of three millimeters total that you usually get with chalk V1 switches. So I'm going to discuss the orthodontal elastics here. I have at the end of the video when I go through the sound test, but some people have alternatives that they use in terms of O-ring modding um, that make it maybe not quite as quiet, but you get better travel distance, which is something that I think is a worthwhile trade-off for some people. Um, but I'll leave that decision to you for now. We're going to get to the rest of the modding process, which is what really makes it quiet. Um, and unfortunately, this is the most tedious step, and that's the tape mod. So what is tape modding? Tape modding, uh, let me show you with the pre-disassembled switch. Uh, by the way, when you're looking at linear switches, linear chalk V1s, you've got four main components. You've got the spring, the stem, the top housing, and the bottom housing. So looking at the top housing, you'll notice uh, in this hole where the stem goes, it would normally be on this side, of course, you have two spots here on each side where the stem scrapes against it as it's moving up and down. So basically the idea of tape modding is we put a small strip of tape looped through these sides and then we put lube on that tape. More specifically, we put it on the sides of the stem as it moves past that tape. And having that thinner track for it to move along that's been looped up gives it a very steady channel to move along and it, it really quiets the scraping that you would normally get from an unmodded chalk v1. So uh, we're going to do that first. First I'll show you how to disassemble one of these switches. Uh, basically the best thing to use is a pair of tweezers like I've got here. So uh, and I really like the curved ones because they usually give you a better uh, angle of incidence if you're trying to attack something in a corner or whatnot. But either way um, we've got two points on the tweezers and we've got these two tabs on each side of your switches. So what you want to do is put the tweezers under each of those tabs and basically roll it around the outside of the switch. Uh, you don't really just want to push it away from the switch because these tabs can deform and then uh, you might have to push them back and that's not good for the longevity of your switches. Um, so you do that on both sides. Let me get that under both sides here, roll it around, and then there we go, already disassembled. Disassembled. You can do that pretty quickly, it only takes a few seconds. And then, as mentioned, you've got our four components here. So, as mentioned, we're going to need the top housing to do the tape mod, and then, of course, we're going to need some tape. So, in terms of the tape I use, I just use scotch tape. I've got, and of course, specifically, this is one-sided scotch tape. I've just got normal magic tape. Um, the important thing is that it's thin, it's sticky on one side, and it's not sticky, and it's specifically it's smooth on the other side. Some people, I know specifically Germ from G Heavy Industries, will recommend packing tape. I got this from UPS today. Um, 
And I would say maybe the difference is the strength of the material or how sticky it is, but um, really most tapes will work. I honestly, I like the Scotch tape because it's a weaker adhesive and I'll get into that mainly with um, how accurate you can be with the tape modding. Uh, but we're gonna need a strip of tape. I usually use one that's, I don't know, a few centimeters in length. And we're gonna put that down on our cutting surface. And I'll get out my knife, I've got a Leatherman here. And I'll use a ruler, you can freehand it, but really you just need thin, very thin, that is to say strips of tape. You're really looking for maybe no more than a millimeter if possible in terms of width. So let me cut one, there's one, I'll do two because there are two sides that we're gonna have to put the tape on. And I cut all the way through there. So let me show you how wide those are. But as I mentioned, you're really going for as thin as possible. So there's one, right? But it's, it's very thin, it's about a millimeter or so, maybe a bit wider. I, I wouldn't worry too much, but really aim for as thin as possible. So we're gonna take our switch housing and I'll start with one side. Basically you uh, put it through the donut hole as it will, and you're gonna want it, the sticky part of the tape facing outwards. And there's not a great technique for this. It's a very tedious process and it, it, it basically sucks no matter how you do it, but your goal is to put the two ends together and then pull the rest of the tape together. And it doesn't have to be perfect, but you're really looking for it to be at least close together on the bottom here where the tape meets up at the loop. Um, specifically, you'll notice I haven't closed this yet. I'm gonna close it, but I wanna make sure that it's closed downwards in the direction of the tabs. So let me turn it like this and then pull it taut like this. Uh, so now that it's together, you'll see that it's facing downwards in the way that the tabs are such that when we clip the extra, it's facing down away from where the cap impacts the top of the housing so it doesn't come apart over time. So we've got to do that on both sides. Luckily, I cut two slices here. Ignore the cat hair that's been embedded in. Uh, that'll get cut off with the excess, so it shouldn't be that much of a problem. So, again, very finicky. Um, I'd say that in terms of the entirety of the process, just the, the tape modding alone can take uh, a few hours if you're doing something like a 40% board. Uh, it, and especially if it's your first time, it might take a while. Um, but if you're only doing this for one board, especially for one set of switches, I'd say it tends to be worth it um, because of the quietness of the thockiness that you can get out of this modding process. So there we go, we've done both sides. Uh, and as mentioned, they're both going this way so that the tape doesn't get messed up when we cut the excess and put the cap on and start using it. So that's the uh, tape mod process. Now all that remains is lubing. So we're gonna lube basically everywhere that the spring and the leaf are moving around in the switch housing. Uh, in terms of lube itself, I use Crytox 205G0. I get this from BoardSource. Um, you can also get it there. I'll put a link in the description. Um, some people recommend lighter lube. I would say that you'll probably want to use a lube that's appropriate for the strength of the springs in your switches. So as mentioned before, these are, of course, silvers, as indicated by the color of the stem. Uh, and they have about 40 grams of actuation force in their springs. But there are other linears that people use. These are pro reds. They're 35 grams of spring force. These are G chocks. They're anywhere between 12 and 20 grams, depending on where you get them. But when you get to these lighter ones, uh, you're going to probably want a lighter lube so that you aren't really gunking up the movement so that the uh, relaxation of the spring back to the resting position of the stem isn't slower because your lube is that much thicker. The lube will break in over time, of course, but um, might as well, if you have the opportunity to buy the right lube, get the right lube for the job. So I'm going to open this up, and as mentioned, we're basically lubing everywhere that the spring and the stem are moving around. So you also don't want that much lube. I really put a tiny amount on there. Let me start with the bottom housing. So where contact is happening is where the spring sits in this round hole on the bottom. So I'm gonna put it around there and on the bottom, which is where the spring contacts. So that looks pretty good. 
I'll do it on the spring. I usually pick up the spring with the tweezers that I've got, these curved tweezers, because it's much better than lubing the tips of your fingers every time. That gets kind of gunky after a while. So I use a bit more lube. You, you usually can't over lube your springs. I wouldn't use too much, but the lube on the springs doesn't matter as much as it does on the other parts of your switches. So usually what I do, as you might be able to see, is that I um, distribute the lube along the length of the spring and then I move it around the spring. So I'm taking good detail to make sure it's evenly distributed, but it will, of course, distribute itself through usage over the course of a few days or maybe a week. So those are the first two parts, and then all that remains is the stem here, and we've got two spots. This is the bottom of the stem where the spring rests, and then most importantly, the sides of the stem, which is where it scrapes against the tape that we just put in place and the inside of the housing generally. So let me do, with only a little bit of lube, way too much, uh, only a little bit of lube, let me do the bottom of the stem here. So around the inside, on the bottom, I'll put it on this tip too, but mainly on the sides here. So that's done, and then get some more lube and do the sides. I'm a bit more liberal here, but you don't want to do too much, of course, so it doesn't just get gunky. And the other side. All right, make sure that's nice and shiny. And there we go. So we have now lubed and taped up this switch. We just have to put it back together. Again, tweezers, uh, your best friends here because they're like better fingers. I'm gonna take the bottom housing here. I'll put it in my hand so you can see what I'm doing. And put the spring on first. There we go. And then the stem. Uh, make sure that you're aligning the bottom of the stem with the bottom of the switch here. So, a little tricky. I guess so. it doesn't matter that you put it on correctly, you just can rotate it afterwards. But there it's rotated into place. And then lastly, we've got these two pieces of tape sticking out and the switch. You want to make sure that the tape doesn't get eaten by the inside of the housing. So make sure those are sticking out when you put this thing together. So I put that in. Oh, watch out. And it clicks together and there we go. So now we've got a much quieter switch here. It really is that much quieter. Uh, let me clip now. I've got some flush cutters, but you can just use scissors. The excess tape from the mod here. Again, I'd leave a little bit extra. If you cut all the way to the quick, as it were, you will uh, have risk of the tape coming apart. So yeah, actually you can see that just happened when I pulled on it. I'm gonna put it back together, but the tape can come apart if you don't leave a little bit of it to stick together with at the bottom there. So that's put together and I'll just get uh, an O-ring. I'll put that on a cap here. Oh, one side and the other, and then I'll put that on. But just like before, the O-ring is really easy to put on. Really, it's the, the tedium of the taping and lubing that is the worst part of this. But now that that's together, it is very quiet. Now you'll hear a little bit of sound coming. I would say that's mainly from the grease. Uh, you're going to want to wait for the lube to break in. It'll take a couple of days of actual usage. But once you do that, this thing can get really quiet. Uh, I will say, if you're going to do a full 40% uh, mise en place, um, you're going to want to take everything apart and then maybe do each part at a time. So lube every spring, lube all the bottom housings, lube all the stems, do all the tape mods to all the top housings. But if you pipeline them like a sandwich shop, you're going to have a better time in terms of the total time that you take to do this. Uh, it'll be easier to get a, in a rhythm that way. So. Uh, we've gone through the process, we've uh, gone through just the O-rings, and we've gone through the, the looping process, so now it's a good time to hear how this all sounds. So, as mentioned before, I've got this Microdox over here with a few different configurations of either taping or O-rings or looping or whatnot. 
And I've also got some chalks here, uh, chalk robins specifically, to show you the difference between clickies and the defaults. So to go through the list here, right, on the thumbs I've got two chalk robins as a clicky representation. On the top here, this black and white is our neutral. We've got unmodded uh, silvers. Uh, right below them is the, uh, these are the taped ones with no O-rings. So there's no loop, just tape and no O-rings. We've got the uh, O-rings and the tape, but no loop here. We've got just O-rings. We've got everything, which is, this is the standard output, right? You'd have tape, loop, and the bigger MX style O-rings. And then as mentioned, I've got some orthodontic elastics here, which are a bit louder, but they give you more travel distance. So I'll go through the sound tests first, and then I'll show you a side-by-side -side comparison of the travel distance you get from these, and then we can uh, wrap up this video. So uh, let's, let's get started. So that should be enough to cover it. If you're looking for any more comparisons, I can probably set up different comparisons, maybe with more keys to do a full typing test, but it'd be better to maybe give you a larger overview of the different options you've got here. But really the takeaway I'd say is if you're gonna do this um, as shown, the difference between the loudness of the unmodded and the just O-ringed uh, uh, silvers here is pretty, pretty good. Um, but uh, really it's maybe a 30% um, difference. If you don't have much time, you're not really willing to put in the time to do a full day's worth of modding. Can't blame you, but you're not getting that much bang for your buck. I I'd really say it is worth it for your main board to go all the way with the silvers that are fully modded, which means tape, lube, and O-rings. Uh, but as mentioned, there's a difference here between the silvers that are unmodded, right, in terms of their travel distance, which are the same, of course, with these chalk robins, as there are with the orthodontic elastics and the full MX style O-rings, right? So if I hold all of these down, you'll see that the distance um, all the way down here is maybe a half millimeter off between the unmodded, unringed switches and the orthodontic, uh, ortho orthodontic elastics here. But the difference between the orthodontics and the full O-rings also being about a half millimeter means that there is a full millimeter of distance between the travel distance here and the travel distance here. So uh, I'd say for me, like getting that, that difference is maybe 25% in terms of two millimeters all the way down, or excuse me, two and a half millimeters all the way down here and two millimeters all the way down. So I leave the decision to you whether or not it's worth it for you to have the 
quieter switches but less travel or the slightly louder but a bit thockier switches with more travel. Either way, that pretty much does it for this video. If you have any questions, let me know. I can maybe make another video with some clarification or I should be able to answer your questions in the comment section. I'd like to thank Germ from G Heavy Industries. She's put a lot of great information out there on this subject, so I'd like to thank her for this information. Um, and we'll see you next time. Let me know if you have any questions in the comments. Enjoy the rest of your day.